There we go. Right then, folks, let's see if we can't make this one work. I kind of want it to work. Hello, and welcome to this scenario. It might be easier to restart. We've done that. Locally set up first, and this will be carried out automatically. So if we... Let it do its thing. Alright, we set up PCBM. Right, loaded 95s are limited to 100 kmh. It's all been set up and we have access to the help if we need it. And there are several signed temporary speed restrictions along the route. There it is that we can come back to it. Away we go. Look slightly down so that we can see more clearly. Green, green on the voice signal. Limited to 30 kmh at the moment. The background's not working. Hang on a minute while I sort the cab background out. It's right here, but it's just being awkward because, again, Windows update. Better. All it needs to do is reselect it, and all is good. Uh, Edge has been updated as well, yeah. Still limited to 40 because of restrictive monitoring, and we're about to go through that, um, that signal. 1000 hertz magnet is now on. Is this the Lurker which gave hassles yesterday? Yes, it is. <laughs> I think we'll give it another go today. And I'm not going to use the um, the normal throttle controls. I've clearly not got the hang of those, so I'm going to just use the key, E and Q. So, the R628 over there. Not much of a train race because I'm not trying to be. Uh, I'm not trying to rush it. I've got a freight train. It's not about rushing it. Uh, oh, the Western Pacific FP7 has been updated, has it? So, shake your fist at it. Rah! Right, we've got a speed reduction anyway at 40 kmh down here. Fine, we're already stuck at 40 kmh anyway. Got an expect stop again at the next signal past uh, TRR 110. Uh, 
I was just thinking that your your you, the crash dump you just had was probably karma. <laughs> Switching tracks. Another speed reduction. So we'll carry on rolling at 40. What causes dump files, King Apple? Usually an error, either an out of memory or something that's just not right on your system. Right, so we've got a 60 limit at this point. I love that zero up there, that's really helpful. I've got 60 here, so I'm going to put some speed on. Not a lot, but a little bit. Jakey Trains, well, the stream's been actually running since about, I don't know, half past two or thereabouts. But we just started Train Sim a little while ago. The FP7 California Zephyr update also comes with a new scenario in two parts. Super. Again, so I'm going to assume 40 until I'm told otherwise, given that it said zero. <coughs> We're reducing the scenery quality, reduce dump files. Uh, if you're running out of memory, then I think it's scenery quality um, dramatically reduces how much memory the game uses. reduction again as we carry on. Oh yard over there. Got any lights on? We do. Excellent. Speed reduction with an expect stop. Is it F3 on there? No, there isn't. So it's 40 kmh through here anyway. So we'll carry on rolling at 40. How was the wrong pantograph up? My understanding was that you used the front pantograph if you had tankers behind you. Besides, it was all automatically set up, so.
rolling along. Not in a rush. Like every train. Definitely don't want to rush. This I think is the red, isn't it? Yeah, this is our red. Okay, Shaz, and the way it was explained to me is that was how it was most of the time, uh, except for when you've got oil tankers or fuel tankers behind me, in which case you use the front pantograph to avoid the possibility of a spark near the tankers. That was how it was explained to me, but again, I didn't set the scenario up, so... Bring it to a stop. We haven't got as far as we did Ed yesterday, um, so there is plenty of time to break it yet. This is an hour long scenario. So you remember yesterday, this digit went all funny. Which does sort of make me wonder whether or not I just broke the loco. <laughs> What are the lights on the dashboard? The, these ones, this is the PZB signalling system, so at the moment I'm in restricted monitoring under 500 Hz control, which means 25 km per hour maximum speed. Once the 500 Hz EM finishes, which is all distance based, um, then if I'm still in restricted monitoring where you're flashing, then it'll be back up to 40 kmh. Alright, we've got the flashing whites. Let's get going. Gone through Bethel 40, 500 Hertz is finished, so we've got 40 kmh now. Got another white light down there. It does feel odd that I'm accelerating. I guess the Bethel 40 means I am allowed to accelerate to 40. It seems odd. Accelerating that much without actually having a, a proper signal giving me that authority. Probably quite correct, just I'm not used to it. <laughs> the problem with, with the German, which fairly went with a Yan scenario, I'm always doubting myself. Because there's uh, the bits and pieces which are enough for most routes that just aren't enough for one of these. Right, we've come out of restricted monitoring, which means I'm now under my own um, control. The uh, speed limit is 80. Should 
Shaz says, if you lift the front panto, danger is that if the panto gets damaged, bits of it fall off, they may hit the back panto as well, then the local will be towed. If you lift the back one, it gets damaged, you can lift the front one and continue your drive. That's a good point. Am I going to drive other virtual railroad trains in the future? Uh, I've driven several in the past, but uh, and uh, yeah, I like driving their stuff. This one's on Steam. So, uh, as always, I drive what's on Steam. have to use the, the the horn lever again for the the E and the Q keys for um, or notching up and down on the rail driver. That might be a bit bad doing that. So it's a go via for the first stop or for the first waypoint. We didn't get to that last time. 3.3 kilometres to go. Calling a, uh, a talent going in the other direction. Just running down, not uh, coming up. Amber Cano, is this local on that? No, this is a standalone loco. This is a Virtual Railroad BR143 um, expert line, which is uh, it's on Steam, um, but it's something that um, yeah, it is only available on its own. It's never been bundled in any DLC because it's a third party product. Went through a sign of some sort. Oh, okay. This is what happened last time. So we went through, I think, a temporary speed restriction thing, which told us to drop the uh, um, our speed. And hopefully this time, because I hadn't got, I saw the 500 hertz magnet coming there, and because I hadn't had got down to 45 kilometers per hour, it um, it tripped. Now this time the wheel slip alarm hasn't gone off at exactly the same time. So hopefully. When we stop, it can reset. And hopefully we can get it going. Right, we've got it going. I saw that we'd gone through an, an alarm there, but I hadn't got what it was. The thing with these, you've got to look out for things which are on the route, not on the HUD. <laughs> I'm so used to looking at the HUD. With these scenarios, I'm almost better off not having the HUD to look at. I 
I think we're probably crossing back over at this point. That indicator seems to imply we're crossing back over. Yes, we are. 40 limit again, though, because we're back on restricted monitoring. stopping here, we're going through we're about a minute late so we're going to lose more points now we're only minus 16 though and we're back on a green signal so let's notch up So Vitlik, we are due there 23 kilometers uh, 52 minutes so that puts us in three minutes early however judging where the timing timings are that's a red light. We're limited, I think, to 90 anyway. That was the last pop up. Hundred KMH. I like the pop up system because it's you can go back and remind yourself of instructions you've been given. Uh, Francois, why does this route cause problems? Because it's been loaded with loads of extra detail and scenery, essentially. Um, it uses an awful lot of memory. Um, so you have to turn the detail settings down, as it says in the manual. What, why anyone makes a product where you have to, by default, turn all the settings down, I don't know. I can't speak to that. But that is basically what they're saying. Um, it seems like a strange thing to do. And in addition to that, I mean, Yan usually puts plenty of AI in his train, in his scenarios, um, which means that you're going to get lots of extra memory used by those as well. So the combination of a, a heavy AI in a load in a scenario and um, a very heavy route uh, means that you're going to get dump files otherwise because you keep running out of memory. The game's got a limited amount of memory; it can only access three three and a half gig, and. Uh, it's, it's not a limit that you can play about with, unfortunately. Coming up on that 90kmh. Someone was, uh, I think it was Jan actually when I mentioned it to him, um, he was saying that uh, if in doubt when you're driving along one of these routes, um, 
If you see a PZB magnet, just press acknowledge. And then be ready to uh, react to it. Hits are off. Sounds like something from an RPG world. <laughs> Hats are off. Gaining time slowly, I'm sure we're going to lose it in the temporary speed restrictions and all the emergency brake applications. <laughs> he says nearly missing that. Made it below 70 just about in time, I think. I'm not even sure what I passed. I saw something and acknowledged it. 500 hertz. Reducing speed. Ah, oh, we've got something going on here. One really good thing about Pasta, by the way, folks, is that the um, the um, use-by date is so far away that you don't have to worry too much if it's Pasta sell-by date. <laughs> I went there. Right, we're out of monitoring, out of restriction, off we go. That was presumably a TSR over that junction. Acknowledge a reduced speed sign. Yeah, I, I, I wondered if that was what it was, slam by. Down to 15 kilometers to our first stop. Oh, yeah, that's the TSR going in the other direction. That's a nice touch, actually. I mean, a lot of scenario authors would only put the magnets and so forth in, in the direction that you're going. But Jan's put them in, in the other direction as well, because you'd expect to see them. You can look for them. Coming up on Selim, or 
AI goodness coming in the other direction. PZB tutorial put up at some point. Um, but anyone wanting to learn PZB, um, it's possibly the most frustrating way to do it, but one of Jan's scenarios is definitely because everything will be in there uh, and you can uh, you know you get it, it's right. Where Jan does it, it's right. He really knows his stuff. using my AWS button to acknowledge signals. So I'm using the um, page down button to acknowledge, and it's not just signals. Anything that the driver needs to acknowledge, um, speed reductions, all sorts of things, they are all, um, you will go over them, you then have to acknowledge them, but you're not reacting to uh, an alarm, you're reacting to the fact that you have to know that you have to acknowledge it. Um, I'm also doing the CIFA as well, um, which does mean that It's um, just put the brakes on a bit, keep the speed under control. That was a warning for 110, which we don't have to worry too much about. Yeah, so you go over a, a, a PZB um, Belize, which is a bit like an AWS ramp, technically. Um, and um, you then have to not only have you done that you've also then got to adjust your speed accordingly so if you go if you're just as we are at the moment and you go over a, a ramp a thousand Hertz light will come on when you acknowledge it you then have to reduce speed to 70 kmh um, right so we've got a um, yellow four signal which uh, forward signal which is um, sort of yellow yellow which means expect stop so as we come over we acknowledge it thousand Hertz magnet comes on we've now got to get we now got to get under 70 kmh which is quite easy um, if the next light continues to be red which is what that's implying at that point we need to be by the time we get to the next magnet which is 500 Hertz we need to be at 45 kmh or under Um, once the 500 hertz light switch uh, goes on, we then need to drop to 25 kmh. So that light is a red. There's the magnet coming up. We're down below 45. So the 500 hertz light just came on. So I'll drop it down to a crawl now down below 25 so we're good loving the AI fantastic scenario so we're now in restricted monitoring because we've been down below 10 kilometers per hour for a certain amount of time, which limits our maximum speed. In this case, 25 kmh anyway, but once the 500 Hz goes, we'll be back up to a max of 40 kmh. Right. 
clear to go. We need to acknowledge possible a uh, an expect stop at the next signal. And we are 100 kmh speed limit past this point, which is the 10 at the top. We're only 25 kmh at the moment, and we're restricted monitoring. So we need to bear that in mind as we accelerate past. But as we come through here, we need to acknowledge so that they we're still in 500 hertz. What that should mean is that we go back up to 1000 hertz, so we're still now at 40 kmh. The 1000 hertz being because we went through that. So it's the 500 hertz was overriding it. Once the 500 hertz came out, the next serious, most the next most pressing thing was the 1000 hertz magnet. So, but at the moment we're still limited to the uh, for, uh, restricted monitoring, which is uh, 40 kmh at the 1000 hertz magnet. Hey, Brandon. Nine kilometers to Vidlik. PZB must become a habit. To be honest, it's becoming much more natural to me. You know, I'm not getting it right 100% of the time, but I'm kind of knowing roughly what I should be doing. I generally know why I've done it wrong, even if I've still managed to do it wrong. Whereas previously, you know, when you first do it, it's just, the trains just keep stopping and you're just going, I've no idea why that train just stopped. What I like about um, Jan's scenarios is that there's extra stuff in there that's not in any of the other ones I've tried. So there's temperature speed restrictions and there's other things which mean the PZB, you have to pay even more attention to it. So we're out 1000 Hz magnet control now, but we're still in restricted monitoring, so I still... And I can't release it because I don't know what the next signal is. I can if the next signal was a green, then I could release out of it. But if I release out of it now and the next signal isn't green, then everything, all the brakes will come on as soon as I go through it. There's the next signal, third of a mile. It's a white the looks of it. Oh, hello. I have no idea why that went on. Not a clue why that went on. Went over a PZB magnet, but maybe I was going too fast. Seems odd. Never mind. Told you there'd be more emergency brakes as we went. 500 hertz, but we weren't on 1000 hertz. How can we have? I'm confused now. We weren't on 1000 hertz, so how can that be a 500 hertz? Maybe it's a forced 500 hertz. I've not seen that before. It was an expect stop, so regardless of the 1000 hertz, I should have been expecting the 500 hertz. So, yeah, okay, my bad. Now, as it happens, we've got a shunt signal. Careful, 25 kmh maximum at the moment. And we'll need to befell through, override the signal to get past it. Use the override 40 button. Gets us through the signal. 500 hertz is cleared, so we are now. Well, that implies that we're full line speed. That doesn't seem right. I can tell you didn't make this look. <laughs> So we've got no monitoring or anything else. We're in notch eight. We've gone from being a couple of minutes early to a couple of minutes late to Whitlick. Talent two going in that direction. A bit more self-mobile. <laughs> 
self-propelled than the previous one we saw. Oh, have a good vacation, Steam Master. Oh, I've got another signal coming up in a mile and a half. Be interesting to see what that throws at us. Forward signal gives us double green, which means we are good. They can throw the uh, power on with a bit more confidence, assuming we don't hit a temporary speed restriction, of course. Always concerns me when the ETA is going down the way it is at the moment. Like, apparently I'm going faster than the game expects me to be going. <laughs> but that generally means, I guess, that the average speed has been turned down by the author. It does mean I'm actually gaining some of that time back. But we are stopping at Whitlick, four and a half kilometres. I guess one of the things with Jan's scenarios as well is that he doesn't just place all the AI and so forth, he places a lot of track assets as well. So all the PZ, a lot of the extra PZB stuff, so that he's completely controlling what's going on with the uh, um, with PZB and restrictions and so forth. So there's an awful lot going on that is beyond just simply adding train and pathing train. Squirrel streaming phone bus, is he nice? Under KMH Max, there's with Lick, we're stopping there. Right, acknowledge that, we're now slowing down. So we've got speed reduction, I didn't see a ZS3V, so we have to expect 40 kmh. We're down below the 70, so we ease up the braking a little bit. This presumably because we are um, swinging off to the side. to 40. We've also got an expect stop signal coming up. Just for the next one. Under 45, if we get the 500 hertz magnet attacking us.
Yes, yes, darling. Okay. Right, crossing over. We've got a couple of white lights here, so we're good to go over. Probably doing this a bit slow, actually. I think we're allowed up to 40 through here. Oh, it says 60, so we should be able to do 60. Feels a bit fast. <laughs> Stop. Right, run down, go through here, and then we'll park up in the uh, siding. This isn't the end of the scenario, it's just the uh, the next bit. We're not too bad for on time given that we had an emergency break. Alright Ace Rimmer! What a week. Nice one Matt. Please enjoy 500 Twitch points. <laughs> Thanks very much Arnold Ace Rimmer. in the siding. I'm just going to bring it to a stop here. I oh, know there's a red light somewhere in the dinner there. In the distance. Can I get some GGs for Arnold Ace Rimmer, please? Sorry, I should have said that. <laughs> right, next stop is uh, we're heading over to Bull A in 16 kilometres once we get the uh, permission to go. Lost another 56 points. Here he comes. Well, he's clearly not now. I'm not. Oh, I probably am in his way, aren't I? Of course I am. No, no problem at all, train boy. Thanks for everything you did. I managed to get one of the fields um, cultivated, so we just have to finish getting the uh, the other two one the other two harvested. ETA is going up, but I've got a red light. I love that. <laughs> oh, we've got permission to proceed. Thank you, Mr. Signalman. Restricted monitoring, so we're limited to 40 kmh at the moment. No, I haven't looked at that yet, Dave. We were just carrying on with the um, the one we had at Bjornholm that we were doing. That I started previously. I figure Bjornholm will do for the time being, so that I can get the hang of uh, a wide variety of what you've got to do in uh, farming. So, 
acknowledge a speed restriction to 40 through here, but there's nothing to acknowledge. It says 60. I'm limited to 40. <laughs> Don't forget that I'm limited to 40 now. <laughs> is this a scenario that started, that was messing about yesterday? Yeah, well, this is the loco. That, yeah, this is the same scenario. It wasn't the scenario that was trolling me though. That's <laughs> the loco. Amtrak Master, you can upload your scenario this afternoon. Oh, excellent. Ah, oh, we're at 40 now. Okay, that was probably what that green-yellow was referring to. We're out of restricted monitoring, 130 kmh speed limit. We can't do 130 kmh, but we can get up to our full speed. Try and get up to service speed quite promptly. Skater Brian, yeah, got loads of American scenarios later on, actually. After this scenario, I'm going to have a very short break and uh, get some dinner and uh, be about 10 minutes at the most. Um, and then we'll carry on. We've got two or three more English scenarios, and then we've got, I think, four or five American scenarios. 15 kilometers to Belay. Hey, exit signal, is that? That's an exit signal, ASIC. That's Ein and Aus, isn't it? Ein, I think, is entry and Aus is exit. Keep an eye out for any more temporary speed restrictions. No Dutch scenarios. <laughs> Green fall signal. Oh no, I won't, I won't rush it, it just doesn't take that long to eat a bowl of pasta. <laughs> green with the double green, which is good. We've got 80 limit coming up, so I'm just going to wind the notches down. Get the brakes on a little bit. Don't want to give the scenario an excuse to uh, cause me problems.
Going down a hill now, so I just need to keep an eye on the speed. The speed limit increases to 110 after the tunnel, but we're still limited to 100. Right, we've got an expect stop coming up in a kilometre. Or oh, a stop coming up a kilometre. Down under 70, so we're good. It's resting on the e brakes at the moment. But I'm going to brake in advance given that we're going down a hill is using the horn entry and exit correct for UK? certainly UK, I don't know about Europe it's basically to alert anybody because because you're coming in and run out of a tunnel you're inherently invisible 500 hertz, we were down below 45 <laughs> I totally wasn't paying attention to that approaching this red. We're down, up, down below the 25. Get it down to 10 and we'll just roll on. So we run restricted monitoring now because we've been going um, below a speed, certain speed, 10 kilometers per hour. Ten calamities per hour. That's interesting. That signal. Oh, I can show something else. I love how these signals change. They've got a lovely mo um, behavior to them. Okay, we're off again. Restricted monitoring, 500 hertz magnet, so 25 kmh speed restriction. <coughs> Cleared the 500 hertz, so we're now up to 40 kmh. I could set up a TPTS for you. I could actually, couldn't I? Yeah, I'll do that. That's not a bad idea. We'll try and make one that'll actually work this one time. Restricted monitoring, so I'm notching down so I can apply the brakes. If you apply brakes while the power's on, then it blows the circuit. <laughs> Nine kilometers to pull out. Oh, we're only two minutes late. Now we can speed up. We're out of restricted monitoring, so we can pull it up uh, to our service speed. Seventy. It's 
7.8 kilometers. A 90 limit coming up. Run down. there because I think acknowledging the speed reductions is done on 80 kilometers an hour or below the speed oh no, it's 90 is the speed what am I doing slowing down about two minutes behind at the moment but we are slowly pulling that back very slowly speed restriction to 70 Arrived in Finland, have you on ETS2? Excellent. Seventy limit at the moment. There. Knowledge reduction to forty. Just I'm not entirely sure when you see it forty, when that's actually gonna take place. But I figure if I'm going too slow, I'm not driving unsafe. Driving too fast is the problem. I guess A is the entrance then, is it? We've got an A and the E, I guess, marking the, the start and the end of the uh, reduction. So we're back up to 90 limit now. Out of all forms of monitoring. We have the same concepts like by the temporary and the uh, temporary speed restrictions. We've got a sequence of yellow signals, TSRs, which are just put in um, when the by the line crew. Two point 
two and a half kilometres to go, we are going to be late, but never mind. Right, we've got a double yellow coming up. Expect stop. Expect reduction to 80. Coming up to the next signal, we need to be doing under 45 so that we can uh, we can stop and deal with the 500 hertz magnet near from required. That looked lovely coming through there, misty in the distance. Make sure we're under 45. There's the magnet just there. We're under 45. Yep, 500 hertz goes on. Squeaky bum time! <laughs> oh, yeah, that was seriously, did not have any idea whether that was going to happen. That would have been a pain right at the end. 500 Hertz Magnet, it's uh, double yellow, so I'll need to acknowledge it as we go through. Jack Simpo, thanks for the follow, much appreciated. Yeah, I was a bit too relaxed on the braking when we went through the 500 hertz magnet. And I'm sure that 500 hertz magnet was a bit closer to the signal than the other ones have been. But that might just be my grumpiness talking. <laughs> Half a kilometre. 40 kilometres an hour restriction because of restricted monitoring. us coming into Belay basic P5. I don't care if I lose loads of points, I just want to make sure we stop at the right point. It's only a tiny little stopping marker. I'm just happy we got to the end, and I only think I fluffed the PZB up twice. And on a Yan scenario, only fluffing the PZB up twice is... Uh, well, I'm happy. I really don't like short stopping markers like that. Right, there we go. Ah, oh, yes. Nailed. Quite happy with that. That's a brilliant, brilliant scenario.
Sorry, I finished. Oh, minus 5.76. I still got a positive score. I got a positive score for the win. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. We've got emergency brakes. Oh, look at this. You have to get a good score to get anything. So it's lots of emergency brakes and timeliness problems. Well, look, you know what? I got to the end. I'm calling that one a, uh, a win. A win for me, anyway. Um... But I think that's a scenario you could go back to and do again now. I won't bore you with that, and do significantly better on because you know what to expect and you can be able. You can you can drive more. And to some extent, when you're learning PZB, you almost do want to do the same scenario over and over again, to the point that you can practice that stuff, but not too much to where you're just working on memory. Right. Okay. Uh, short break time, uh, and then we'll come back and we'll run flats to Felix though. So. Um, Bear with me, and I will be back um, as uh, in, in a in short. Oh no, actually, I was going to set you up a TPTS, wasn't I? I was going to set you up a TPTS. Hold on a second while I do that. Hang on a second. Dum -de -dum -de -dum.